From the time of birth, it seems like human beings naturally attach themselves to the things that we can see or touch. As a baby, we latch on to our mother. And as a child grows and becomes a little older, we become more possessive of toys, food, and of our parents' time. Coming through the teenage years, we become more concerned about the clothes we wear, our cell phones, and the friends we have. It doesn't get any better as a young adult as we become more controlling or demanding of relational partners. We then seek to control our careers, our finances, our social circle. Now, as people grow older, some learn that many of these things are simply not worth the price we tend to place on them. However, many people never really learn at all. And I'm talking about the type of person who, for example, will sacrifice their marriage. They'll sacrifice spending time with their children for the sake of their career, for the sake of money. These are the types of people who go throughout life attached to things that really have no long-lasting value. Jesus Christ taught us a critical lesson about the value we place on earthly things in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus understood that, as people, we naturally hold on tightly to the things that we can physically see or touch, and that includes the people that we love and care about. In fact, we often hold more tightly to the ones we love than we do to the one that loves us the most, Jesus Christ himself. In 1886, a Baptist preacher by the name of Charles Spurgeon delivered a message at the Metropolitan Tabernacle in London entitled, An Instructive Truth. One of the major points of his sermon was, avoid all security as to the present. And he wrapped up this point in a single phrase by saying, hold everything earthly with a loose hand, but grasp eternal things with a death-like grip. Spurgeon was convinced, even in that day and time, that people were holding on to the things of the world much too tightly. He spoke of prized possessions, which people lift up high for everyone to see. But his words assured his listeners that just as those things are found, they can just as easily be lost. The Apostle Paul put it this way in 1 Timothy 6, verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. No matter how loosely or tightly we hold on to the things of the earth, we can unquestionably not carry anything with us when we leave this world. The Bible teaches that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils, yet we strive to find ways to build our financial portfolios more and more. The book of Proverbs tells us not to overwork to be rich, and then the writer in Proverbs 23, verse 5, asks the question, Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Although most people know that money is not the ultimate answer to many of life's problems, we tend to hold on to it more tightly than we should, and we're inclined to think that it can in some way solve life's most troublesome moments. We need to loosen our grip on everything earthly because it is all temporal. We need to loosen our grip on our prized possessions. We need to loosen our grip on the love of money. We need to loosen our grip even on the people we love. But we need to tighten our grip on everything eternal. We need to tighten our grip on reading God's Word. We need to tighten our grip on prayer. We need to tighten our grip on our love of God. And we need to tighten our grip on Jesus Christ and hold on to Him with a death-like grip as if our lives depended on it because our eternal lives do depend on it. And he's worth pursuing above everything else. Keep God first and you will lack for nothing. Let him rearrange your priorities and he will rearrange your life. Give God the throne to your heart and he will change your desires and enable you to be truly satisfied in him. Take a moment to think about what's important. 
In the grand scheme of things, everything on this earth is temporary and fleeting. None of it will last. But God's kingdom will never end. For that reason, He is the only one worthy of our devotion. He is the only one we should be focused on. No matter what everyone else is doing, keep God first. No matter what season of life you're in, keep God first. Because the treasures of this earth are passing away. All of our earthly pursuits will let us down in the end. So store up your treasure in heaven where nothing can be destroyed. Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God, and the rest will be added to you. He will provide for your every need, from the basics like food and clothing, to our soul's deepest longings for love and affection. If you place faith in man, you will be disappointed. But if you trust in God, you will be rewarded. So what does it mean to keep God first? The first step is to make that conscious decision to devote your life to the things that matter. Strive to live for the glory of God. Live to love God and to love your neighbor. Meditate on his word all day long. Honor him with your words and with your actions. Always be seeking to grow in your walk with him because that above all else is what our souls long for. These worldly pursuits demand so much of our time and energy. They enslave us, but Jesus comes to set us free. He comes to bring us rest. So pray for God to tear down every idol, to break down every barrier keeping you from him. Don't be consumed by worry or fear, but trust in all his promises. Because when we keep God first, he will take care of the rest. Lamentations 3 verse 40 says, Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. The Bible calls for us to examine ourselves that we may become more and more like Christ and less and less like the world. We are to scrutinize ourselves, to investigate our actions and to assess our intentions. Are you doing what you do for the glory of God? Or are you performing for self-exaltation? 1 Corinthians 11 verse 28 says, Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So I encourage you to be obedient to this and examine what you tolerate in your life. Be critical about what you give room to.